Hi, I'm Tanya from Multnomah County Library School Corps with Novelties 2022. And in this video, I'm going to cover books about young people experiencing different mental health challenges, letting readers know it's okay not to be okay. If you'd like to find the books and websites I mentioned in this presentation, the links are included in the description below. Thanks a lot, Universe, by Lucas Chad, grades five to eight. Brian is a shy, quiet boy who finds it difficult to have conversations with kids his age. Most of his classmates ignore him and call him ghost, since he seems almost invisible. Ezra is different though. He likes talking to Brian Talking to Brian feels easy. On the morning of his 13th birthday, Brian hears a loud scream. It's his mom. Brian's dad left a note saying he has to leave the family. He's made some mistakes. He's broken the law and he needs to flee before the cops can arrest him. Brian's family is turned upside down. His mom ends up in the hospital, and since they don't have extended family, Brian and his little brother end up in a foster home. The foster parents and the social worker aren't very supportive or understanding of everything Brian and his little brother just went through. It all becomes, it all becomes so overwhelming, Brian, gets panic attacks where he can't breathe and his chest feels like he's having a heart attack. Brian is pushed so far, he does things he never thought he'd do, like running away and punching a bully in the face at school. When Brian seems to go beyond the point of no return, Ezra reaches out. Ezra cares about Brian as a person, but he also has a secret. He likes Brian. Ezra has never told anyone he likes boys. Brian is scared he'll be labeled crazy and he'll never see his parents again, or worse, maybe they don't want to be his parents anymore. Ezra is scared his friends, including Brian, will abandon him if he comes out. How can these two friends confront their worst fears? Discussion questions. One, thanks a lot universe shows us that we don't know what our classmates are going through in their personal lives. How can we treat classmates and friends so that no matter what they're going through, they feel seen and heard? Two, at first, Ezra stays quiet when his friends make homophobic comments and make insensitive comments about Brian's mental health struggles. Later, Ezra does speak up. What makes it challenging to speak up when family and friends say hurtful things about people and circumstances they don't understand? Three, Brian has anxiety and even experiences panic attacks. The CDC reports that mental health challenges amongst kids and teens have been increasing in recent years. What are some ways we can take care of our mental health and help others do the same? Here are some websites um, for further exploration. One, Learn how we can make school a safer place for LGBTQ teens through the Trevor Project. You can also explore many supportive resources the Trevor Project provides. Two, kidshealth.org offers many resources for teens to maintain good overall health. Check out their Healthy Mind resources. Three, Watch this video to learn about Michelle Borges' experience 
as a child who was in foster care. Brian's experience will make a lot of sense after watching it. Stunt Boy in the Meantime by Jason Reynolds, grades 2 to 7. Portico Reeves, aka Stunt Boy, loves living in a castle, which is how he thinks of his apartment building. He knows just about everyone in the building, including his neighbor and best friend, Zola. And he likes just about all of them, with the exception of Herbert Singletary, the worst, who's a real bully. When Portico's parents announce they will soon be living in two apartments and start fighting over dividing up their possessions, Portico gets the frets, which is what he calls his anxiety. He and Zola deal with this by imagining themselves as superheroes in their favorite TV show, Super Space Warriors. When Portico finally figures out What's going on with his family? He feels split in two. But his friends, including Herbert Singletary, who turned out to be not so bad after all, help him get through. This book is an awesome combo of chapter book and full color graphic novel. Just Roll With It by Lee Dufay Lebois, grades three to six. There are so many things about starting middle school that worry Maggie. Will she be able to make friends? Will she be able to find the right school club? Will she measure up to her older sister who was an extremely high academic achiever? Maggie relies on her 20-sided die to help guide every decision she makes, and she follows many rituals that ease her worries and fears. Fortunately, Maggie easily connects with Clara, and the two become best buds. With encouragement from Clara, Maggie finds joining the school's role-playing club is a lot of fun. Though she's able to work through some of her concerns and she has moments of fun with friends, new routines, bullies, constant worry, and anxiety plague Maggie. Maggie's supportive family suggests she try therapy. Reluctant at first, Maggie decides to give therapy a try and finds that it's helpful. The Golden Hour by Nikki Smith, grades four to seven. Everyday life is challenging for Manuel after he witnessed a brutal attack while in school. He experiences panic attacks and sometimes memories of the event seem to come out of nowhere, completely disrupting his life. Manuel finds that his photography hobby helps him stay in the present moment and eases his anxiety. Manuel is partnered up with classmates Keisha and Sebastian, and to his surprise, they turn out to be pretty cool friends outside of school. He finds comfort in spending time with them and being part of their activities and interests like joining them in preparations for the local county fair. Gradually, he opens up to his friends about his experience. Sebastian in particular just seems to get him, and eventually a light romance ensues between the two. Therapy, new friends, and photography help Manuel feel a sense of healing. Contrasting light and dark colors in the artwork help convey 
Monroe's emotions. Living with Viola by Rosina Fung, grades four to eight. Do you ever have negative thoughts that make you doubt yourself? This happens to most of us every now and then. But for Livy, this happens to her constantly. She has a shadowy twin that constantly reminds her of her flaws and makes her doubt herself in everything she does. This shadowy twin is so much a part of Livy's everyday life, she even gives her a name, Viola. Recently, Livy's parents transferred her to a new middle school. Her parents immigrated from Hong Kong and sacrificed a lot so Livy could have the best educational and career opportunities. But their sacrifice comes with really high expectations. Livy does her best to be the perfect daughter they expect her to be. But Viola always seems to remind Livy that she's a total disaster and not a good enough daughter. As Livy tries to adapt to her new school and make new friends, Viola is constantly sabotaging her best attempts, telling her she's doomed to be alone forever. Livy finds comfort and a little stuffed uni kitty she carries in her backpack and just about anything that is sparkly with unicorns, really. But she finds it harder and harder to fight Viola's attacks to the point where she even gets panic attacks and feels sad. Livy recently learned about her cousin Leonard who was facing emotional challenges and was sent to a boarding school. If Livy tries to ask for help, could she be sent away too? Who could Livy talk to? And what, if anything, can she do to feel better? 10,000 Tries by Amy McKinchney, grades five to eight. Golden has become accustomed to working hard to beat the odds. Even though he is the shortest kid on his team, he gives soccer his all. He's quick and committed to being the best. Golden firmly believes 10,000 hours of practice leads towards mastery. So he intends to do just that, to reach mastery of the game like Nolev Messi. This is his last year to lead his middle school team to the championships as team captain. He's got two talented and skilled coaches on his side, his mom and dad, who are admired high school soccer coaches. One of them even played professionally. It seems that as long as Golden works hard, the odds are very much in his favor. Except there are some significant challenges taking place in his personal life. Golden's dad has been diagnosed with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. His dad's muscles are slowly deteriorating and he's dying before his family's eyes. Golden's best friend is also moving to a new city. Believing that hard work and a positive attitude can overcome even the greatest odds, he is determined not to lose his dad and his best friend. Experiencing some wins and losses on the soccer field and in his personal life, Golden learns about love, family, death, and grief. Down below the video, you will find a link to the full list of titles from this year's Novelties videos. Links where you can watch our other school core presentations 
and a link to book discussion tips from the Loma County Library. Finally, you can also find out more about School Corps by following the link below.